Hello everybody, this is Justin here from Pro Tools Education. And this is actually my very first video, so I guarantee it's going to get zero views, but that's okay. But in this video, I'd like to go over Avid's new Pro Tools 11, which is their most recent release of Pro Tools. And you can tell, first off, from looking at it, it has some new looks to it. These meters are 30% taller, and the faders have a different design, as well as when you go into this dialog here, it has a different design as well, which is kind of cool. The under the hood improvements that they've made is that it is now 64 bit. Pro Tools 10 used to be 32 bit float, but it's now 64 bit, so we have a whole lot more headroom to work with. Avid has given us the new Avid Audio Engine, which is a completely redesigned audio engine over the old audio engine, which is like 10 years old. So it's getting kind of obsolete. So they've given us a completely redesigned audio engine which is really nice. They have also given us the Avid Video Engine, which is the same video engine that is in Media Composer. So we have a whole lot more native compatibility with that. For us Pro Tools native users, they have given us buffer improvements, input buffer improvements. So it will calculate the buffer for the output of all these guys. So whenever we're recording, they record with, they play back with a little latency into the monitors, which is kind of cool. And that's basically it for major under the hood improvements. They have given us this new feature called dynamic plugin processing. If I go up to setup, playback engine, you knew you see a new little button here, dynamic plugin processing. So basically what this means is when I have clips on a track, whenever the clip is playing, the tr the plugins on the track are active and processing the audio, but with this new dynamic plugin processing, whenever that clip stops or whenever the audio on that track stops it takes the it takes the power away from the plugins and and puts it somewhere else so it kind of like makes the plugins inactive but still keeps them there it just kind of takes their power away but gives it somewhere but gives it to it gives it back to the computer so it can put it, use it on other tracks and it all does this in the background which is extremely awesome for those of us who have very weak computers like mine but that's okay so they have given us that, and that makes our computer a whole lot more efficient. They have made new ways to bypass plugins quickly to compare what they're doing. For example, if I take control and click, it will bypass the plugin I clicked as well as all them under it. So I can hear, for example, just what this distortion is doing or just what this channel strip is doing, or this distortion enhancer, excuse me. So that's kind of cool, and I know there's a whole lot more keyword shortcuts like Shift E and Shift Three or whatever. For some reason it doesn't work on my computer. It's probably some setting I don't have set up. But there's a whole lot more keyword shortcuts to bypassing plugins, which is extremely handy. They have given us a completely new list of metering options. Now in Pro Tools native, you get four, really three new metering options. And in Pro Tools HD, you get a total of 17 metering options. So this is uh, this is Pro Tools native, and if you notice, if you notice, in Pro Tools 10, you used to be able to only do this, skinny, fat, skinny, fat, which is kind of boring, and it doesn't do much. But now, if you right-click, you notice we have metering options. This is venue, or this is Pro Tools Classic here. What we usually see is 30% taller. Alright, but they also have new ones. This is Sample Peak. Venue Peak. And Venue RMS. And as I said before, if you are a Pro Tools HD user, you get a total of 17 different metering types, as well as a gain reduction meter. Which basically what this is, is this is a little meter that kind of comes down to here. Comes down right here, it's, it's orange and it shows gain reduction from all the dynamics processing on your channel. Now in Pro Tools Native, whenever you first install it and launch it for the first time, it shows this gain reduction meter, but as soon as you change a setting or quit Pro Tools and open it up again, the gain reduction meter is gone. And I think that's just a tease. That, 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 that is just not cool. But anyways, if you have Pro Tools HD, that feature stays forever, which is extremely handy. So that is Awesome. 
Also, in preferences, they have added this new metering window. So go in here and just to let you know they've added a new one to let you add different settings. Now, they have uh, given us a whole different way to look at sends. As you see here, this is a send. It has a little meter off to the side. This is something that's new, so it just shows some signals going through. I'll play a little bit, and it'll, uh, it'll, you'll see it. That's pretty cool, because then you can just see, okay, well, there's a signal going through here. Not too much to base a decision off of, but definitely enough to see that, okay, there's something going through here. Now, you have the ability to see expanded sends. Before, in Pro Tools 10, the only thing we were able to see was just sends A through E and sends F through J, and we could expand one of these sends. So it looks something kind of like this. So it look kind of like this, and then the send would appear here and has a little fader meter. And we can only pick one for A through E and F through J, but now we can do any combination or even up to all of them. So we now can view all of our sends in expanded versions, which is very handy if you, uh, for example, if you have a control surface, you can hide these meters down here. So now you have, if you have a control surface, you can expand more sends than you could before. So you can see more and take better advantage of your screen space. That is very cool. You can also change up plugin parameters by just right clicking. Of course, you have your standard bypass and make inactive, but we have the automation safe and automation dialog as well as user presets here that we can access just by right clicking, which is very handy. And we now have this, oh, I'm sorry, I'm skipping something. In Pro Tools HD, back on the gain reduction meters, up here in the dynamics, when, when a plugin has dynamics, there's a little gain reduction meter that shows up here, exactly like this one, but just a orange gain reduction meter. I'm sorry that I forgot that. All right, and the biggest thing that Pro Tools 11 has, it has been requested for so long, is offline balance. This is incredible, because they have never added this before, and it isn't like all the other DAWs. So, for example, I'm just going to select this here, and then if I go to File, Balance to Disk, usually, and give it give me all this stuff, and I can select what I want, and I click bounce, and it does something kind of like this, and that's kind of crappy. But now we can go up here, bounce to disk, and we have this handy little button down here called offline. And we go and click this in, and it does something kind of like this. So basically, what it's doing now is it's taking my whole session and bouncing it, but right now five times faster than it would take the other version. This is very, very handy for people who do stuff like radio shows and they're like an hour long and they get an error at like 59 minutes. You can't do this. I'm like, oh, geez. So now you can do this really quickly, really handy, and it has a lot of new things that you can do with it. So that's basically it for the features. I know there's probably things I'm forgetting, but the specs of Pro Tools Native, you can have a total of 96 audio tracks at 48K, 48 audio tracks at 96K, 24 audio tracks at 192K. You can have up to 32 inputs on your interface, and you can record up to 32 inputs at a time. You can have up to 128 instrument tracks, 512 MIDI tracks, 128 aux tracks, 500, I'm sorry, 256 buses, and one video track. So a lot of capabilities that they're giving us with that. And that is basically it. I know it was very scattered and unorganized, but that is my life. <laughs> so I, pay, I, just, uh, I, I hope that you forgive me for that. And I, just, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and there will be more videos to come. Thank you for watching. Bye.